on guys who you wanted to see how they'd hold up this week? Um, two guys in particular. Uh, A.T. Hall um, came out of the week really good. Um, you know, will be available for us to play. Um, Devery Hamilton will start. Uh, but there's a good chance A.T. Hall will play in some capacity. Um, and then Trevor Spates. Trevor Spates came out of the week uh, good as well. So he'll be available. And we'll see if he, if he gets any time. And Mike Tyler? Uh, yeah, Mike Tyler and J.J. Sega whiteside were good to go uh, from the beginning of the week. You know, they, they finished up um, in Australia pretty much almost ready, so we knew they were going to be ready for this week. Okay, and so you mentioned A.T. Hall, a good chance he'll play. You also mentioned earlier this week there's a chance Walker Little could get on the field. Is that still a thought in your mind of sure. possibly three right tackles getting yeah, Sure. Um, once again, in some capacity. Yeah. Um, but it, it's just... Very comforting to know that AT is ready to play. He's played a lot of football for us. Um, so hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll have a role for him, whether it is in one of our packages or coming in and playing some time. But I mean, like Devery's also had a really good week of practice. And, uh, you know, good things will be, will be a strong, full strength on the offensive line. And we're going to need everyone on. So what did you see you know, this week looking at kind of what you've seen from SC last week, what we saw at the end of last year, and what you got from playing them you know, each of the past years? Anything well, new with Sam? <laughs> No, the most important thing for me is that we know we're going to get their best shot, and it's our job to give them our best shot. Um, uh, you know, th that's the bottom line. And they have outstanding football players. They got a great coaching staff. Um, these guys are proving it on the field. Um, so, uh, wh whatever anybody else thinks about, you know, us being too high coming off of our win, them being too low coming off of their win, you know, maybe them being high because they finished their game strong. And then us, you know, overlooking, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, all, all that stuff. None of that stuff matters. The only thing that matters is um, both teams know each other pretty well. Um, both teams have a healthy respect for each other. Um, and it's going to be a heck of a football game. You know, speaking of Walker earlier, and I see two other freshmen playing catch back here, when you consider a lot of college debuts were made against Rice, a lot of freshmen got on the field, they're about to walk into a very different environment for the first time and play. What do... How do you feel about that in terms of the number of young guys who could see the field and maybe that moment for them that's going to hit that they're playing in the Coliseum? Um, you know, uh, for me, if, if these guys came here, they wanted to play in big-time games. And so uh, environments, um, you know, there's a first time for everything, but you know, you can't be shocked by environments because you still got to play football. you got to do your job. That's why we train. So we work so hard so that when the lights come on and um, – you get a chance to play uh, for this football team anywhere at any time. You got to play your best. Um, so I think our young guys are ready. Um, I think it's going to be an environment that'll be uh, exciting for them. And at the same time, they got to relax, calm down, and just do what they're asked to do. Ten years ago, you were part of a staff that was walking into the Coliseum under very different circumstances with you know, a little bit different expectations. Yeah. With did you say, like, could you have imagined that this would have been the path that, you know, both your kind of coaching career would have taken and, you know, the Cardinal football program would have taken in that intervening period? Um, absolutely. Um, that, 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 was, that was part of the master plan. The master plan was to build um, and build something that was sustainable, um, to recruit to that end, to have coaches that understand not just how to coach football, but understand how Stanford works and understand um, what kind of young men that we're going to have and how we can push them and motivate them and give them opportunities to be successful. So, I mean, that was the plan. That was the plan to have sustainable success in the football program um, from day one. And uh, it, we knew it wasn't going to be easy. Um, it was going to be it was going to be difficult. Um, but the most important thing for us was to lay a foundation. And once we laid the foundation, we just continued to build on it. And what's kind of the you know the follow up? You know, the people who just didn't believe that Stanford could sustain something like that for, you know, going on eight years, or nine years now, sorry. Um, their dis disbelief was understandable. Um, you know, I, I, even as an alum, before I came back in 2006 with Coach Harbaugh, um, Stanford football was the stock market. It was a little bit up, a little bit down. And then a really great year, and then a bad year. Um, I think Coach Willingham did a really good job of evening out that to a certain degree. Um and we knew that there was there was an, a possibility to do to, to build on what he had done and try to make, take that next step because um, I think Coach Willingham laid a, a general foundation um, and then with Coach Harbaugh we kind of reestablished that foundation and then built upon it. Um, but the bottom line is you find the right guys 
um, in this place, you have a chance to compete, and that was our deal, and, and to bring in guys that believed it from the beginning. We didn't want to have a bunch of guys that were constantly convincing that they could win. We wanted guys walking on campus saying, we can win right now, and that's the mentality and attitude that our guys have. I was just curious, um, obviously without getting into specifics, these next two weeks you guys are going to go and play in Southern California. Are there opportunities in weeks like this for you guys to watch high school games? Uh, absolutely. Uh, we'll take advantage of that. Um, every road trip we try to take advantage of it no matter where we are. Um, but in particular on the West Coast, we know we're recruiting quite a few guys. So coaches will get out Friday night, um, uh, tomorrow night, and a few games, and I'll be, I'll be one of those coaches. And I was kind of curious about that, and I've wondered about this for a while with basketball and football. When you go to these high school games, is – is, are these games you can enjoy watching, or is it always through scouting eyes? Because you're at a football game. It's 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 the same. It's the same for me. I mean, every game I watch, I'm evaluating. I watch an NFL game, I'm looking at talent, I'm looking at scheme. I watch a college game, I'm doing the same thing. I watch a high school game, it's the same for me. So uh, I do enjoy it, but at the same time, um, I want to evaluate. It's always great to evaluate things with your own eyes. Seeing something with your own eyes is much better than watching it on film, so we really take advantage of those opportunities.